Hello students. Today we are going to study about circulation and body fluids. So here you can see these are the RBCs. You can see the RBCs shape. This is biconcave. Okay, we have a biconcave RBCs in our blood. And this is your heart and arterial system. So we are going to study about all these in body fluids and circulation. The contents what we are going to study is body fluid and circulation. That is lymphatic system, <coughs> clotting of blood, clotting factors, circulating pathways, then human cardiovascular system, all about the heart, blood vessels, then cardiac cycle. There is a cardiac cycle in which there is a pumping of blood from the heart. So it's a cycle. Blood vessels, arteries, veins, and the disorders of the circulatory system. So this is these all topics we are going to cover in this chapter. Along with ECG and blood grouping also. Now, we have already done this in animal kingdom that sponges and nidarians, they circulate water drawn from their surroundings through their body cavities, facilitating exchange of substances between body parts. So they don't have a particular organ for pumping out the blood or for the circulation. Okay, they don't have heart, they don't have vessels. It is only the water which is circulating through their body cavities, which facilitate exchange of respiratory gases, exchange of uh, waste through the diffusion process. Okay, so this happens in sponges and nidarians. But like more complex organism, they use special circulatory fluids within their bodies to transport such materials. So for a complex organism, we have a particular organs and circulatory fluids through which there is a transport of oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide and nutrients and wastes. Okay. Now, what is the need for circulation? Why we need circulation? There are many reasons why we need circulation. The main is that we need O2 and nutrients. O2 that is oxygen and nutrients. So our blood carries oxygen and nutrients to the cell and it carries back the uh, waste products uh, to be excreted, right? Now, every cell requires, these are the need of circulation. Uh, every cell requires nutrients and oxygen, so they transport it to produce energy for growth and repair. Also needs to constantly remove waste like CO2, ammonia, uric acid. And transport system, for all these we need a transport system and that is a circulatory system we have. Okay, so these are the major uh, functions okay major requirements we have now what are the functions of circulations transport of nutrients as we discussed from the gut to the tissues or we all know during uh, we have started this in chapter absorption that uh, from its small intestine our nutrients get absorbed right so they get absorbed directly into blood and then they are transported to the cells and the tissues okay then transport of nitrogenous waste from the tissues to the excretory organs so when the cells utilize carbon dioxide utilize oxygen and nutrients and they produce a excretory product that is a nitrogenous waste okay so blood carries these from tissues to the excretory organ like kidneys okay then transport of respiratory gases oxygen and carbon dioxide between respiratory organs and the tissues right so transport of oxygen from lungs to the tissues and transport of carbon dioxide from tissues to the lungs so it is carried by circulation transport of hormones 
वी ऑल नो वी हैव टू टाइप्स ऑफ ग्लैंड एक्सोक्राइन एंड एंडोक्राइन स्पेशली जो एंडोक्राइन ग्लैंड दे सिक्रीट दे आर सिक्रीशन लाइक हॉर्मोन डायरेक्टली इन टू ब्लड ओके सो दे रिलीज देयर सिक्रीशन डायरेक्टली इन टू ब्लड एंड देन इट इज कैरी टू द वर्किंग साइड to the target tissues now transport of heat transport of water blood is the most commonly used circulatory fluid by most of the higher animals including man so blood what we have in the circulation we have a blood okay it is the most useful circulatory fluid we have in higher animals like human beings we have lymph also right lymph also helps in transport of certain substances like uh, wbcs macrophages lymphocytes so it's a just a you can say defensive mechanism we have so blood and lymph together constrain the fluid tissues in the human body so we have two fluid tissue that is blood and lymph the blood and lymph collect various substances such as respiratory gases hormones and deliver them to the appropriate organ right organ or tissue so we also call it postman's job so it collects all the important uh, respiratory gases hormones nutrients and they deliver it to appropriate organs or tissue the blood vascular system is involved in the defense system of the body as it contains various type of phagocytic cells like wbcs right wbcs lymphocytes and macrophages so this is this we call it propolis man job okay for defense system we have the blood albumin provide capillary osmotic pressure to prevent excessive loss of fluids from the blood and help maintain its normal consistency so in our blood we have albumin that is a protein okay so protein what is protein it is a solute right they have a tendency to uh, attract the solvents right so it maintains the capillary osmotic pressure we have a uh, osmotic we have a pressure in our uh, blood capillaries okay in blood uh, arteries also so this is maintained by the albumin okay so that excessive loss of fluid is not happening from the blood okay so it retains its uh, normal consistency we need a normal consistency for blood to flow in the arteries and capillaries okay now fibrogen and prothrombin play a vital role in clotting of blood to prevent excessive bleeding so what we have we have three things first is a defensive system these are mainly globulins we have okay so these are also protein globulins that is rbcs sorry wbcs and uh, your uh, <laughs> lymphocytes then we have albumin which uh, maintains the osmotic pressure so that capillaries have a normal consistency okay and then we have a fibrinogen which helps in clotting if we, if our vessels get injured then they secrete for a fibrinogen which is inactive form convert into active form that is fibrin it's a mass like network so it seals the injury part okay and prothrombin also plays the role in clotting of blood right so these are the functions of blood blood also carries various hormones to the body parts from the organs of their secretion and help coordination of the body hence circulatory system may be called as third integrating system okay so blood carries hormones from hypothalamus from adrenal, uh, uh, adrenal gland from uh, pituitary gland to the various uh, target organs okay blood pressure is monitored by pressure sensor in the aorta volume of the blood is controlled by adh and aldosterone hormones so blood pressure we have a blood pressure sensor which is present near the aorta okay it is a major artery which is carrying the oxygenated blood okay so it is having a pressure sensors and uh, volume of blood what we the volume which is flowing through the arteries and the capillaries it is controlled by adh that is anti diuretic hormone and aldosterone hormones okay so we are going to study this in detail in uh, blood pressure regulation of blood pressure now circulatory system has a pumping station that is heart 
The circulatory system includes the circulation of two body fluids, that is lymph and blood. Okay, hence the circulatory system is divided into two types. So we have a lymph and the blood. And we have a closed circulatory system. We have an open circulatory system, right? <coughs> so we have two types, open and closed type of circulatory system. So all of this and in much more detail, we are going to study in our classroom session. Thank you so much.